welcome Senator Roger Wicker, Senator from the state of Mississippi, my former state, and we're very honored that you're with us here today. Uh, Senator Wicker is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. And Senator, as a member of the Senate and a retired Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Air Force Reserve, what brought you to the topic of name, image, and likeness? Why is this one that you've sort of weighed in on and become a leader on? Well, um, you know, a, a lot of things perk up from, uh, from the states, and that's really how it ought to be in the federal system. So just, uh, I think there's no question about it. Uh, we, uh, we're getting action from uh, the state of Florida, which has a state statute that, that actually may go into effect uh, mid-year next year. And also uh, other states um, are, are toying with this, California and uh, Western states. Uh, and um, it, it's obvious to me that we have a situation where where there needs to be a uniform standard. If there was ever uh, a, a situation in which the uh, the rules ought to be the same, East Coast, West Coast, North and South, um, it, it ought to be in an area where there's intercollegiate re recruiting. I mean, uh, um, the the um, starting quarterback for my alma mater, the University of Mississippi, is Matt Corral. And uh, he was recruited from California. Uh, clearly, if, if uh, there are different rules for different states and different conferences, uh, that creates an untenable situation. And, uh, and I, I just think most people agree we, we need to have one set of rules. So um, I, I think I, it, it's clear based on things that I've said in opening statements and, and at the subcommittee level and the, and the committee level that uh, I, I, uh, I might have waited uh, a little longer to tackle this issue, but the issue is before us. And, uh, and uh, so it's an opportunity um, to make it uniform and make it fair and uh, help college athletes and not hurt uh, intercollegiate athletics. So that's where we are. Senator, you mentioned Matt Corral and, and Ole Miss, and you're, you're of course a fan of the football team. For years, the NCAA has said, and some many many believe this, that if college athletes are paid, even in the form of an endorsement deal, if they do a deal with their local car dealership, that some fans are going to tune out, that they're going to say, this is basically minor league sports, masquerading as college sports, that, that the idea of, of amateurism will be lost, and, and, and that basically the college sports model will take in less money uh, do you do you have that concern at all that you know think you know not not just as a U.S. senator but as a fan that that is that a worry for you? It's a concern. I think it can be overcome. Uh, yes. Uh, let me just say that things are. I, I started college in 1969, and I know looking at me, you, uh, I'm sure you can't possibly believe that, but uh, <laughs> it was the it, things were different back then. Uh, and and the times have changed. I mean, this is a multi-billion-dollar um, industry, and um, and and I, I think the fans are gonna are gonna stay. I, th I think we need to be concerned that um, that education not be harmed, um, and and I think we need to acknowledge also that um, even without moving to name, image, and likeness compensation, that um, most intercollegiate uh, athletes uh, do very much benefit from their ability to play college uh, sports. Uh, I mean, uh, a, um, a, a, a complete full scholarship and other benefits, um, housing, things like that, um, are, are important. And so, you know, when I talk to uh, athletes, that say have been out of the game now for some 20 years. They didn't play um, in the in the pros and didn't um, uh, didn't really go beyond, or at least not for very long. Uh, most of them will tell you I, I gained quite a bit. It was a, it was a wonderful benefit to me, and the fact that I had a scholarship at Mississippi State University, got a free education there, got uh, a, a chance 
to play on national television and and, uh, and and participate in something really really big and something special that a lot of people care about is a is a benefit. So we need to acknowledge that also. But you know we are where we are, and um, and, and and though I may have come to this reluctantly, uh, I'm I'm there. And, uh, and I'm acknowledging that this is something we need to tackle. It needs to be done. It needs to be fair. And that we need to figure out a way fairly for college athletes to be, um, to be compensated. Senator, do you view this topic as more of an issue of economic freedom, economic liter- li- uh, liberty, sort of the American way, or is it more a matter of civil rights? We know that the two sports that generate the most revenue football and men's basketball have a high percentage of African-American players. Do you view it as either or? Do you view it as both? I'm wondering how you, you know, view name, image, and likeness within that, that discussion point. Well, can we just view it as a matter of fairness? Um, and also um, um, even handedness uh, across the country at this point. Uh, that, I, I think that the argument has been made and is carrying the day that it's unfair for uh, a university to make tons and tons of money and not compensate the players. Uh, that it's unfair for, uh, for networks to make tons and tons of money. I mean, this is big, this is a big business. And, and we, uh, we know, and a, and, a, and a college athlete realizes, particularly at the, at the basketball and football level, uh, that's what they were looking for. They, they want to be on TV and they know that, uh, that TV uh, networks uh, make, make a lot out of this. I think we also, though, need to be careful to remember that these are folks right out of high school. I mean, a, a freshman uh, at, uh, at, a, at a major uh, Division I university, uh, they're, they're thrust into... Uh, um, um, a, a mighty big uh, playing field uh, and on a mighty big stage. And whatever we do n- needs to take into account. It's hard enough for a senior in college who's got an agent and who's trying to get in the pros. It's hard enough for them because still they're young. Um, but someone in, in high school uh, looking at uh, – at a major NCAA program, uh, there need to there need to be protections for them. Senator, you mentioned agents. Uh, who's going to oversee the agents when they go on okay. college campuses? Okay. Right? That's that's a it's it's not something that's been resolved. We've heard that maybe the Federal Trade Commission will take on that authority. Maybe there will be some other commission that's run in part by the House of Representatives and the executive branch. We you know maybe the NCAA, maybe it's states. Okay. Have a sense of the right, you know, the right. We don't want it in Congress. We sure don't want to run. <laughs> we pass the laws and let somebody else administer them, and that's a basic tenet of our uh, of our civics. So no, uh, Congress won't will not be running it. Um, and and I'll tell you, um, the conferences don't want it. Um, I, I don't think they all speak in, a, in one total voice, but uh, they don't want it. And, and, and there's much opposition to the NCAA uh, running this sort of thing. I mean, they, they, they have a purpose and they've got their hands full. Um, so I, I'm looking at a piece of legislation uh, that, that we're still um, refining at the staff level here uh, in my office and on my committee that would create um, a, a newly created body under the jurisdiction of the Federal Trade Commission. Um, and, and they would have uh, enormous um, latitude to, um, to, to set this policy and to, to uh, make it begin to work under, under um, some, some um, um, parameters that we would set for them. The FTC doesn't have enough personnel and they do not have enough time to do this themselves, but decisions um, uh, made 
uh, by the participants under the rules of, of this body un under the FTC would uh, eventually be uh, subject to uh, review, much as the Supreme Court uh, of the United States reviews only a few things, but they have ultimate jurisdiction over all the courts. Thank so you, that's, that's the concept I'm looking for. I'm looking for a new entity that isn't there now. Uh, and, and this entity would be mighty, mighty busy uh, resolving a whole bunch of questions. And I'll tell you, um, back in the spring of this year, when I realized that, that, that this issue uh, was firmly before the Congress and in the laps of those of us uh, in the Commerce Committee and that we need to do it right and be thoughtful about it, I sent out uh, questionnaires to 50 parties uh, to, uh, to ask them to, to get back to me and answer specific questions. Um, and, and I, th I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm correct there. Um, I, uh, I, I believe the last hearing I had, I, um, entered those, um, the, the responses, um, to, uh, in, in the record. So that, that it's in the, uh, in, in a hearing record that this committee has had, but, but we've got a bunch of, um, we got a bunch of questions to answer. I mean, uh, uh let me just, um, at, at, at what point do you let somebody have an agent, a high school student, or do you say, no, um, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, this is going to be for sophomores and above, but we're not going to put some high school kid uh, in a position of, of having to, to not only deal with where he goes or he or she goes to university, but uh, what kind of an agent to have and what kind of compensation deals. I just think that's too early. But it's a question that the Congress has to answer. How will universities be prevented from uh, manipulation um, during the recruiting process? Um, what, and and, and um, to what extent do uh, collegiate sponsors get to participate in this uh, name, image, and likeness thing? I mean, I, um, I, I, I think you know, there have been constraints on that in the past. And for example, an automobile dealer, uh, you know, can't give special things to a, um, an athlete in, in, the, um, in the hometown of, of that particular university. We, we, need to, we need to see if we're gonna waive that or if that's gonna be there. But um, um, also there, there's some concepts about sharing the, um, the proceeds. So the quarterback gets, uh, huge name, image, and likeness contract, and um, uh, does he does he keep all of that himself, or uh, is there some uh, regulation that he must share that with the lesser known members of the team? There's uh, senators have approached me with that concept, and so uh, for for our listeners and our participants today, these are all um, questions that are yet to be determined. And you know, I, I'll tell you, when I was a boy at Ole Miss, I never heard of a, a transfer portal. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, now, you know, it's, um, some player gets unhappy with the coach mid-year, they enter the transfer portal and there you are. Well, um, is, um, it is a potential better deal on, uh, on NIL advertising and uh, our NIL compensation uh, going to have uh, uh, many, many more people entering the transfer portal to get to a richer media market. It's all sort of, the sort of things that need to be discussed. And once we decide we're going to do it, and I think we are going to do it, um, to what extent does the Congress make these decisions right off the bat? Or do we leave a lot of leeway to um, thoughtful and talented and well-advised members of this new entity that I would create? Um, there's, there, there are just uh, a myriad of questions that need to be um, reviewed and considered. But, but I can just tell you, um, we're, we're nowhere near um, a consensus in my view um, about how to approach this, but we're going to approach it and some decisions will be made.
at what level they'll be made is, uh, is a good question. And Senator Wicker, you, you mentioned earlier that Florida's statute goes into effect next year in July. Four other states have passed NIL statutes. A number are contemplating them as well. The, the, the clock is ticking, you might say, for Congress to act. And we don't know uh, how the executive branch will uh, react unless you have insight you know, on that. Uh, would, would President Trump or President-elect Biden, or would they go along with uh, what, what members of Congress come up with? What, what, do you feel like that's going to be a pressure on- That's certainly, that's certainly how a bill becomes a law. Um, I, I would think, though, um, whatever comes out of the Congress is going to be bipartisan. Um, regardless of who has control uh, in the Senate, uh, and that it, 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 the Senate could be evenly split 50-50 or, uh, or as much as 52-48. Uh, Re regardless, the way our rules work now, we don't pass anything like this without consensus. And, uh, and so it, whatever would come to the president's desk um, would, would be something that had, had widespread support among Republicans and Democrats. You know, the, another issue that's out there uh, and might be treated differently depending on who has the majority uh, would be the issue of uh, unionization, organization of intercollegiate athletes. There's some people that would go that far. I, I would have major reservations myself. And, and I think, uh, boy, I think most uh, colleges and universities, even even those um, that are, are considered uh, uh, left-leaning um, would have major concerns about uh, at college athletes having been given a scholarship and having union rights, um, much as faculty members might. Uh, it's, a, it's a bridge I don't want to tread on. But the NIL piece, so let's just setting aside, I know what you're saying, the, the broader providing labor rights would be very contentious. Some people would, put, would, some people would, would make that a part of an NIL. Bill, that's the point. And do you think, I guess, so, so will that ultimately doom NIL, that there's going to be other pieces of, of the legislation that you and, and Republican colleagues, and, and I imagine some Democratic colleagues, might not go along I think, with? It, I think it would, um, would be a, a, major, um, a, a major drag on, um, on our efforts to get, uh, to get a comprehensive bill. You know, they're... they're um, there are also people who w would not um, permit us to uh, to preempt state laws. Uh, you know, on, honestly, if we if we can't have a, a uniform standard, I don't see the point in, in uh, going through this exercise. To me, a college recruit uh, in Mississippi um, ought to be uh, able to be recruited uh, by Boston College or Southern Cal or, um, or, or Washington State under the same rules. And it, to me, I just think that, uh, I, I think uh, the vast overwhelming majority of, um, of sports fans and Americans and parents and educators all around the country would agree with, with that concept. There needs to be in, in, in the national athletic um, uh, Collegiate Athletic Association. It, it, it needs to be a national rule. And do you think as part of that national rule, there should be an antitrust exemption? As you know, colleges and conferences are competing businesses. They fall under the scope of Section 1 of the Sherman Act. The NCAA, from what is known, has lobbied for an exemption. But of course, that's controversial, right? Because if, if a restraint is reasonable, it wouldn't be found unlawful under Section 1 of the Sherman Act. So what are your what are your thoughts on the possibility of antitrust exemption? I, I think when we start um, tampering with the status quo, there uh, it make, it makes it harder. So in in, the, in that regard, we need to leave things as they are. That would that would be um, my judgment, unless I'm persuaded otherwise. But uh, really, we we're uh, we're open to a lot of suggestion here, um, but the clock is ticking and, um, and, and we need to move. As a matter of fact, um, 
I wouldn't rule out um, something passed in the lame duck. I think a lot of things would have to come together, but we do need to act quickly. And I will tell you, uh, you get to January and you get to an inauguration and then a sort of a honeymoon period there. We don't have much time. Um, and um, and, and um, it, so I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm intent during the months of November and December 2020 on uh, continuing to work on this issue and trying to reach a consensus. Well, Senator Worker, thank you very much for your time. We know how busy you are, especially with everything going on uh, in Washington, and we're grateful that you spent some time with us today. Well, thank you much. I don't know if I've told you much, but maybe I've outlined some, uh, some parameters of, of uh, the questions of, for the debate coming forward. You've been very helpful. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.